Hello. Hello. <coughs> Frog in my throat. Hello. Welcome back. As you can see, I'm on a beach and I'm down on the uh, coastline near Hornsey. Hornsey? Hornsey? However, they pronounce it. Beach fishing. Um, I love beach fishing. It's just been waiting for a weather window to get out again. And here it is. So it looks quite nice. It says 0% chance of rain. You can take that with a pinch of salt, obviously. It said that yesterday where I live and it lashed it down. Um, aye, so I'm basically scratching, scratching around. I will put some bigger baits out. I've got two rods. Uh, the first one is the Limitless Pro Sport 14 foot, which I'm still uh, trialing. Just my mate gives it to have a go of, which is great, thanks to him. Uh, I had it on the last trip. But I haven't caught anything decent on it yet, so I haven't given it a run for its money. But it is a great caster. And today, actually, I'm trying the Akios Fury FX420. Um, it is the Energize Pro Edition. I'm just trying to read it off the, off the road. Um, thanks to Alex, the awful angler, for uh, giving me a go of this because it's been something I've been wanting to have a try of for a while. And <laughs> I've just cast it out and I've run out a line on that five and a half thousand reel. I've never run out a line before on that before and I haven't lost any line like recently. So first impressions are wow for casting. Um, I wasn't sure it's a three piece and I've never used a three piece rod before. And I thought, whoa, three piece rod. I use a four piece lure rod so I don't know why I had any uh, apprehension about it, to be honest. I just didn't expect it to go like that. But, uh, and I only put a, um, a four inch lead on it, bomb lead. So I'm gonna have to swap reels. I'm gonna have to put an 8,000 surf blaster on there when I bring that back in, because I was walking back up the beach, like literally no line left. Luckily I'd put a decent knot in it. Um, so I first impressions on that for casting is boom. That's a beach rod and a half. Um, like I say, the Limitless, I'm really trying my best to um, get a decent fish on it. I might get a thorn back today, hopefully anyway. I will target them. Um, anything thorn backs, bass, dabs, flounder. Uh, we'll see, we'll just have to wait and see. Not my neck of the woods this, so I just thought I'd give it a bash, it's a nice day. Had a nice drive down, lovely area coming in the last 40 minutes of the drive. You know, the fields and the um, sort of Norman churches and stuff like that. Very nice, nice place. Withensea near there. I was just trying to take in as much as I could on the way. So yeah, I've just put out ragworm on that one, lugworm on that one, or the other way around. We'll see what bites and uh, see if we can have a bit of fun and bring a few fish in. I'm not bothered about size really. It would just be nice to get a few fish on the board after just the one dogfish on the last trip. So I've got everything I need. I've got squid, I've got hermit crab, um, I've got bluey, I've got ragworm and I've got uh, big long frozen blacks. Freshly frozen, if that makes sense. I haven't been frozen too long. So yeah, wish me luck and uh, I shall bring you back if anything out the ordinary happens, like I get a fish. <laughs> Come on, get a fish. Well, unfortunately, I did uh, hook my microphones up to the camera. I've done something wrong somewhere along the line. 
I don't know if it's the wire or maybe I haven't linked them up properly. I've been having terrible trouble with uh, with the microphones of late. So if you can bear with this for the rest of the video, I will try and keep it short and just show you fish. As you can see, I'm rabbiting on there. I can't even remember what I was saying. Um, looks like I'm. I think I'm explaining the gully. There was a gully on the left-hand side, like a big, looked like a big soup bowl, um, full of water when I got there at low water. And the channel ran out to me right, sort of where my backside is, um, from left to right. So I decided, right, I'm going to have a cast in there, and I thought there's a great chance of a bass. Hence why I loaded up with uh, lugworm and ragworm. On the left hand rod I had a, um, a two a pulley panel and on the right rod I had a two flapper, one up one down. I think I had the ragworm on the right hand side and the lugworm on the left. So I just started noticing a few nibbles pretty much as soon as I chucked in. So let's uh, see what happens here. Just see me go and try to check the rod, feel for the bites, and uh, sure enough, there was bites there, which was really exciting because I'd only been there about, well, I'd been in the water, as you've seen, about a minute and a half. So, uh, aye, let's see if anything comes of this one. The Fury was really, uh, really something else to use, the Akios Fury. FX420. Thanks to Alex, the awful angler, for uh, giving me a crack of it. I always wanted a try of it. Eventually got round to using it, and it casts absolutely superb. I did try with different weights. I tried with uh, three ounce, four ounce, and then I gave it a six ounce at the end. I thought, surely you can't chuck that, and it did absolutely no bother whatsoever. So I was really impressed with that. And it's definitely on the purchase list when I, the next one I buy will be a one of those. So I, here's the here's the first fish I was delighted with. Like I'd say, it's always a great sign, isn't it? When you first cast and you're straight into the fish, I thought, get in. Didn't know what it was, to be honest. Um, I hadn't felt a, a bass on the, <laughs> off the beach since last summer. So I forgot what that feeling was like. So there it is. First bass of the session. Hi, right, so lovely 35 centimetre bass. It's quite deep hooked actually. We did manage to uh, get it out. I couldn't manage to see it with my eyes where the hook is, I couldn't feel it, I had to give Alex a shout to give us a hand and he came over and the second pair of eyes sometimes helps doesn't it? So uh, aye, we've got it safely back in the water, I think Alex took that one back to the water, thanks to him for giving us a hand, I just couldn't see it, couldn't see it at all. There we go. Straight back in the water, Alex is just reviving it there. Took a little bit of getting back, but a yeah, sharp kick and went. Happy days. And then before you know it, the other rod is bouncing. I didn't even have a chance to uh, get the other one back in the water before the um, Limitless started giving us a shake. That's a much bigger heavy duty rod. Um, it pulled that in like, well, I didn't realise it was on actually at first. I thought, I wonder if it was a crab or something. I'd feel a little bit of weight, but um, a small fish like that is very little work for that Limitless rod. Now yeah, we get a little little show of that one there. That one was slightly bigger. It was knocking on 40 centimetres. Still a schoolie, still under size. But as with all um, 
well, pretty much 99.9% .9 of bass I catch. They go back, unless occasionally I do bring one back for a bass and chips, which is very seldom. Sometimes when I'm camping, I'll keep one if I'm fishing and camping, just for the fire. But that one went straight back and I was over the moon with that. I'm just explaining there that I'm definitely in the right place with that gully running from left to right. I knew it from when I was looking from the top. I just thought it just looked so, so bassy. So I was over the moon. It's nice when you do a little bit of research first and look at it at low water as the tide's pushing up. So I was happy with uh, making that decision. You've got to bear in mind as well, this is like still within the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes of, of actually casting out my first cast. More action. This was on the limitless again. Um, like I say, it's 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 bite sensitivity is actually pretty good considering that the, you know it's a heavy ground rod. I guess that's what its main use would be for anyway. I'm not seeing you. Well, obviously you can see I'm using it on the beach, and it's done a job without a doubt. I just want to be able to test it a bit more with a bit of a heavier fish and heavier ground, which I will do. I've got plans for it. They're in no hurry to get it back. So I said, give it a whirl, you know, give it a good, a good go and tell us what you think. So this is bass number three coming up the beach. I couldn't believe it, it was like Christmas morning. It was just non-stop action. There we we'll have it. That was a similar size to the last one, maybe just in size, I think, I guess that was between 40 and 44, something like that. Still not a fish, the size fish I would keep even if I was eating. Um, I would, if I was eating a bass, I would generally keep them between 45 and 55 maybe. So they've, they've had a chance to grow and they're not big spawners. Yeah, so more than more than happy to see those ones swim away and thank it for showing its face. <laughs> it's always nice to get a bass. I love the fight bass give, whether that be on a lure rod, a big rod like the Limitless, beach rod like the uh, the Fury. It was great to have a mix actually of catching fish on two pretty much polar opposites. You know, I've got the, the Fury which has got a lot of whipping it's got sturdiness throughout the body of it, but the tip's got a lot more whip, which is great for, for beach fishing, you know. And obviously the Limitless has, has its advantages of, if I did get into that big um, ray or something, you know, I had a chance of uh, giving it a good tug in. So here's a, here's a five minute spell I had, just <laughs> getting a breather. I was taking my hat off, I was sweating. I was running backwards and forwards. I was trying to get me, I had to go back to the car to get me uh, other reel, which was a 8000 surf blaster. So that's behind the camera at the moment. I was getting that sorted and I was just waiting for a, a bit of time to, uh, to get the other reel on and get baited up. Like I say, it was non-stop from the moment we got there. It did quieten off. And, uh, but I was quite thankful if I just <laughs> sit down in a, in a cup of coffee and I had a bit of chat with uh, with Alex, who I mentioned earlier, who's got a channel called The, the Awful Angler. And here is Alex, I just, uh, <laughs> just explained to him that this is how you catch fish, mate. He was still just praying for a bite. So 
I was trying to offer him advice on if he'd come and sit here next to my box and pick up a few tips and hints of us. <laughs> oh, it was a good laugh. It was a good laugh. I had him, uh, I had him scratching his head, that's for sure, because we were using the same bait. Alex got the bait, just gave him some cash and said, look, buy the bait in bulk for the two of us. And uh, we'll just uh, fish together. And he was about 20 yards to me right. And he hadn't had a bite yet. I was telling him, get yourself over here. Chuck into this gully. But he's a, uh, he's a stippler. He wanted to keep plugging away where he was. Credit to him. You'll have to visit his channel to see how he got on. I'm sure uh, you'll enjoy his videos. That's Alex, just, he was just fishing, not far away. I was watching him reeling in, just hoping he'd uh, maybe found the bass. Had he? Well, you'll have to find out on his channel. Well, I wasn't sure what I, what I expect here yeah, when I was reeling in. I thought maybe a small thorn back or something like that but I just kept reeling the limitless made really light work of it I chucked that one out quite away actually which is surprising because like I've always said I'm not a massive caster just your average Joe I suppose but uh, I didn't know what was coming up here So yeah, not a, not a bad sized doggy at all, it's a lively one, don't often get them up here in, in the Northumberland coast, you do catch them, I'm sure there's lots of people caught them, but personally I've only ever had two and they were both from Dunstanborough Castle, off the back of the castle, in the height of summer, so I, I mean, a lot of people get plagued by them and wish they would bugger off, but when you're not used to catching them, yeah, they're quite a nice catch. Good fish to look at. So, before I had a chance to uh, do anything, it was back to reeling in again. And uh, out came the final bass of the session, which all came in daylight. If you look at that, it's a stunning fish, isn't it? I'll never get bored of uh, catching them. They're just a magnificent specimen. Beautiful colours, just finely tuned. You can tell how they're just so predatory, you know. The king of fish, I call them. They're just absolutely superb. With a built stealthy, fast, scaly, they're just a great fish to, to target and catch, and gives us great pleasure putting them back. I love seeing them swim away, make sure they're fully revived. Little ones like that are generally flapping about like mad and go back so easy. One drop in the water, bush of a tail, and they're gone. So here I'm just, again, I didn't know what was coming up. I was thinking, is it a small bass? I thought, mm, maybe another doggy. So I, I, I was confident it was a doggy by the time I got halfway. I thought, yeah, it definitely is. And then, then it just sort of got heavy, you know, and I thought, right, this may be a flatty. 
because there wasn't many head shakes. And uh, much to my surprise, I pulled in a tiny thorn back ray, which I was absolutely delighted about. That was uh, species number three. Because, like I say, I was scratching around with different size rigs. And uh, obviously, the more species that I get, the better. I think size was going to be a problem. It's still early on, isn't it? Although, you know, I've been watching other people's videos and been catching some crackers. But uh, as for this particular day, we're all just. Uh, quite small what we were catching so that's a lovely thorn back ray just giving Alex a, a shout over just to basically double identify for us I was confident what it was but there was no thorns in it <laughs> and uh, it had a few like markings on I've only ever caught one before which was at Silith Prom which was about two years ago and uh, I just wanted to get Alex in to give us his confirmation that it was a thorn battery. So I was uh, over the moon and uh, aye, that goes back as well. The sea was just lovely, spot on. Weather was great, the wind had dropped. And it was, uh, it was lining up to be potentially a fantastic session when the sun dropped. So I'm reeling in again with another weight and I was saying to Alex, this is a much better fish, much better. This is a cracking bass. To be honest with you, I'm pleased uh, the audio played up on this bit. Because <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say I was embarrassed, but it was a bit uh, sort of egg on your face time. Because I was sure it was a bass and I thought, that's giving a cracking fight. Hence why Alex grabbed his camera and uh, came over. But... Uh, Unfortunately, it wasn't a bass, but it was another doggy, which kept us in the game and uh, added another fish on the board. Well, as the, as the night drew in, the, the fishing actually turned off. So, uh, aye, that was the, the best of the session. So it was just time for uh, one late fish. I mean, this was two hours after darkness. I was getting towards 10 o'clock at night, bearing in mind I had a three hour drive home. Three and a bit, actually. So yeah, this was the, the last catch of the night. So thanks very much. Sorry about the audio. One of them things, I live and learn. Hopefully I'll not make the same mistake twice. Thanks to Alex, the awful angler. If you go across to his channel, find out how his session went. And uh, I subscribe to his channel. Please subscribe to this one. Drop us a comment. Let me know how you've been getting on. Have you been catching yourself? Hi, thank you very much. Sorry there's no outro of me and Alex because it's just me and Alex talking to the camera, which uh, it's pointless putting on. So thanks to Alex for everything. Thanks for 
thanks to him for taking me to this spot where he's fished before and I had a fantastic session the best of 2024 a nice few bass a few doggies and a little thorn back I'll see you on the next one thank you very much